Next on NFL Game Pass Film Session. You got to have guys that can problem solve in the field. And I, I take pride in, in that being kind of my role. Former Eagles Brian Baldinger and Ron Jaworski sit down with current Eagle Malcolm Jenkins. Today, but I want you to take the clicker. Ooh, I okay. want you to direct this here, all right? The safety talks about his versatility. Based off of matchups, you know, I'll go to wherever the threat is. If they got a, a really dynamic tight end, a really dynamic running back, you know, a receiver that we need to have extra attention to, just manipulate me to be able to keep our defense in, in an advantageous matchup. His mindset to create turnovers. It's not enough to just get this guy on the ground. How can you just take an ordinary, you know, play and, and make something with it? and how he has transformed into one of the best tacklers in the NFL. To me, the art of tackling is a lost art. Yet, we look at you, every time we plug in the Eagles tape, and you seem to make every tackle on the field. Baldi, uh, we have a special show today. Very special. Very special show, because we now have... Three Jersey guys yeah. on the set <laughs> having some fun. We want to welcome Malcolm Jenkins from Piscataway, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Baldy and I always talk about being Jersey tough, so it's good, yeah. good, good, good to have you with us. And speaking of tough, you did not miss a snap on defense all season long. How do you do that? Let's go. One play at a time now. Hey, one play at a time. I'm, I'm blessed. I don't. I, every time I get that question, I don't try to take too much credit for it because we know how this game is. You know, guys get injuries as part of the game. But was there a time in any game, Malcolm, where you were like, like I don't know, whether it was hit, shot to the ribs or anything else, where you thought about it? Like coming off the field? Yeah. No, never. Okay. No, no, I'm just no, saying. No, no. Like, that's no. impressive. You ready for that opportunity? You ready? This is coming. Your play coming to seven, just make it. When you talk to yourself, is that to motivate yourself? Like, just the reminders? Yeah, so, like, I, I have the tendency to get bored in games. Really? Yeah, like, especially, that's why I don't like playing deep. Because I, I use, like, you got the best seat in the game, you're just watching everything happen until something bad happens. And so I just try to keep myself, you know, patient, where my feet are, like, focus on the next thing. She's like, you gonna make the play. You know that, right? She said, you gonna make the play. I, I take it, Malcolm, that you spend a lot of time in the film room prepping mm -hmm. and watching the opponent and getting ready, just not only as a group, but individually. I think you probably spend a great deal of time. Yeah. I it shows. It. So we want to get into this thing today, but I want you to take the clicker. Ooh, okay. I want you to yeah. direct us here, all right? We're going to start by, by your general versatility here, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we talked about how you could play the slot in the nickel, in the dime, the free safety. You know, I, I've come up with a, a name for his position now, Baldy. You know, in my creative mind, I get these random thoughts. So hey, I'm going to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want a pen to write this down? <laughs> yeah, 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 this may be a stumper. The course safe slot backer. <laughs> the slot backer? Wait, wait, no, course safe slot backer. Corner, safety, slot defender, linebacker. We the course safe slot back. We got we to shot. We got to shorten that down a little yeah. bit. <laughs> well, you, you played them all. Yeah, you know, yeah. I just, you know, yeah. I, I play where, where we need it, and you know, fortunately for us, uh, you know, I just get out there. Wherever the stress of the defense is, that's where I want to be. If they got a, a really dynamic tight end, a really dynamic running back. Right, but I'm saying if we call any tackle, you're not blitzing. Right. You, I mean, the back. yeah. I got you. 28 is in. I got him. Based off of matchups, you know, I'll go to wherever the threat is. You know, a receiver that we need to have extra attention to, that's kind of just manipulating me to be able to keep our defense in, in an advantageous matchup. So here we are with Fitz. Larry, yeah, yeah. my guy. These are the type of guys I like to cover because he's big. Like, I'm big. He's not going to do, he's not going to outquick me or anything like that. So I'm very comfortable, you know, with this matchup. 
I know where my help is. Behind you? Yep. Actually, I'm probably supposed to be inside leverage because we don't have a whole player, but I'm comfortable knowing that, okay, if he goes underneath, then I can, I can slip him. But it's, again, here, Malcolm, it's your, you get your eyes back yep. to the quarterback here. Once you recognize the timing, you know, of, of the route, you know when the ball should be able to get there. So once he makes that break, I know, okay, the ball's coming. If it's going to go to Larry, the ball's coming. So I got to right. look at that, at that break. And if it's not there, then I'll, I'll get back to him. But that's just a feel for the concept that we got and, and when the ball is supposed to, you know, arrive. When you go back to the beginning here, Malcolm, yeah. what what are you looking at right here? Are you literally looking at the belt bu buckle right here? Uh, His so number? I, I, I look at um, their knees. Yeah, because like everybody, you know, always tell you, look at the belt buckle. Yeah. What happens is you go from the, the waist all the way up to their eyes. And then when you're looking at a receiver's eyes, trying to stay in front of them, that's, that's bad news. So I'll look at like something small on their pants, whether it's a stain okay. or a stripe because that doesn't move. Hmm. So everything up here is, they're gonna be doing all of that, but like that stuff doesn't move. So I keep my eyes down below. But aren't the legs like going in, like maybe not with Larry, like yeah. you're talking about, nah. but like some of these guys that can really like juke at the stop. Their leg, the, the jukes aren't in the legs, it's, it's up top. The, I mean, your legs, they might be staying in place, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna move. <laughs> Got here with that. But one of the things that you also have to do here, Malcolm, in your versatility, and I forget Jaws' word here. Um, of the course safe slot linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to see if that sticks or not. Everyone will be using it. We'll have a poll question. Trust me, Baldy. Everyone will be using it after the show. <laughs> well, I don't know how many Malcolm Jenkins are out there in the league, but here you've got Janu Smith in man coverage here in Tennessee. Yep. Knocked away. Malcolm Jenkins, excellent coverage. One of the things that you do really, really well on the, when you cover these tight ends is you will take an angle to undercut them mm -hmm. in the potential route. I mean, anytime you're in a slot or you're covering a tight end, somebody in the core, you got to know where your help is. And so my help is deep right over the top of me. So I really don't have to worry about getting deep over the top. So anything that they run, I'm going to try to undercut it. And so anytime they run this over, I want to get to a spot where I can be right underneath it, where I know he's not climbing, and then you just play the ball from there. One thing you do that seems obvious to all defenders, but they don't do it, is you always seem to be able to find the quarterback. We give quarterbacks, I think, too much credit. Right? What? <laughs> <laughs> we give them too much credit. We, we assume that every time as a defender, and we've been taught this since Little League, you always assume that the ball is going to be accurate and be there on time. So when you're beat, you automatically just stare. You try to run up and play his hands when watching the tape, like nine times out of 10, the ball's underthrown or it's not in the right spot. And you're like, dang, if I had just turned around, it would have been an interception. So we work a lot on, once you get to your spot, look for the ball and play the ball. If the ball's not there, then go back to covering your man. Right here is a little veteran move right there. Oh yeah, the little, like you, the little That's grab, a little old little corner yeah. trick right yeah. there. I mean, you got, you got his hand and, but you know what you're doing right there. Like, yeah. It's subtle. For me, I'm looking at the ball and I want to make sure I know where he's at. And so he and he's trying to do the same thing. Like he wants to kind of keep that extension. So we we're kind of playing that game. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm a tug that so I make sure I can get get to him. <laughs> well, they've taken all of your tricks away, Malcolm. Like, not, all, not all, not like, all. You gotta be savvy, that's okay. all. You gotta be savvy. <laughs> to me, the art of tackling is a lost art in the National Football League. Mm -hmm. You know, Baldy and I go through all this tape, and we see all these guys who throw stuff. Like, I don't know how to tackle. Look at this. Look at that. He's giving up. Yet, we look at you every time we plug in the Eagles tape, and you seem to make every tackle on the field. <laughs> Why are you such a good tackler? I work on it. I mean, yeah. you know, for me, it's I had to change my technique up uh, maybe five years ago. One, to keep my body healthier. It was, I was having a lot of big, you know, high-speed collisions and shoulders and everything were, you know, were hurting. So I changed it up just to, to hurt me less. But I really went to just like a wrap and roll, you know, like gator roll type of tackling. And um, it's just, it's efficient. You know, it's not necessarily the big hits and, you know, the knockout shots that, that I kind of grew up watching, but you're getting the guy down, you know, consistently. Here you are in the slot here. Yep. We're given the appearance of, of man to man. 
and then the slot motion. So yeah. I'm just right now actually a, a flat defender. When he goes across the motion here, are you saying anything like across, across to anybody? We're just saying bump, bump, bump. bump. Okay, so, bump. so technically, if you, if you want to look at it, we're, we're a one gap defense. Yeah, so yeah. right now, my, my gap is outside of this second receiver. Once he motions in, technically I'm now a B gap defender. Mm -hmm. I just play it from way out here. As soon as the tackle bypasses the defensive end, now I'm just a, I'm, I'm out, we call it rope -a basically, where I, I come back out and take contain. Wow, you're a B-gap defender from that position. From that that, position. That, that's, that's pretty amazing. It's almost like a linebacker shooting into the backfield to make this stop. Malcolm, normally a team would run that motion. You'd bump take across you and get you out of there. Did you just have now your tape study, your film preparation? Okay, you're expecting this play? Well, so uh, what we do, and we'll switch it up basically from game to game, is sometimes we'll run with that motion, sometimes we won't. Mm. Um, and so, because we, we learned that lesson the hard way playing the Rams <laughs> last year where every, right. every snap somebody's in motion, they're shifting, and it gets you running all over the place, and then the ball is like right down there. So we, what we did was settle it down. Sometimes we'll run with it, sometimes we won't. And that'll keep all our backers, you know, locked in. That'll keep our secondary all in the same gap. But go back to the tackle here, Malcolm, because this is Derrick Henry. And he is a, he's, he's a, like, I don't know how people know how big that guy is yeah. until you see him. You talk about how you kind of roll with them mm -hmm. right here. You're not going to take that brunt no. right here. Yeah, in my mind, as soon as I see them pitch this, I'm like, I got to get him before he gets me. <laughs> so you got to get the bull before the bull yeah, gets you. Yeah, I want to get him before he gets going, you know, because he's a low once he starts running. So, uh, you know, I'm closing the space as much as I can, and then I'm just going to wrap and roll. And that way, you know, you just take his momentum with him. I'm only really tackling one leg, uh, so I'm not taking on, you know, the, the brunt of his weight and all that stuff. I just get around him and then, you know, roll that thing up. Your shoulders recover a little bit faster in the offseason. Yeah. You like that. <laughs> exactly. Quick pitch to Devontae Freeman, who's got a hole. He's at the 50, and he is cartwheeled right there. What amazes me is your open field tackling as well. I mean, you got Freeman out of the backfield, a lot of space, oh, and yeah. you just tackle him in the open field. <laughs> I mean, you just don't miss tackles. Well, Those are big yeah. plays. Yeah, the, the biggest thing, though, is uh, for this play is just really the angle. The, the way you approach ball carries are always going to be one of those things where I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not trying to get his outside leg. I'm not trying to get out in front of him. It's just pin that inside hip so he can't cut back. And then you just wrap up and, and... But a lot of guys aren't wrapping up, though, Malcolm. And I think there's a time and place for it. This is not one of them, especially, you know... Not with, that guy. Yeah, not that guy with backs that, you know, have good balance that won't just, uh, you know, fall to the ground. Malcolm, do you have a plan when you go into the game, like a Derrick Henry, and you're standing looking in the back and say, okay, I'm anticipating this. I'm going to go low, I'm going to go high. Do you have a plan of how you're going to play each running back you face? Yeah, I, I, I call it, a, well, I, I was taught when I came in the league, I'm going I'm to reference Greg Williams a lot because he kind of taught me the game, but he always talked about having a tackling plan. So I know, you know, how I'm going to tackle specific, you know, ball carriers based on what I see on tape. So some guys I know I'm probably going to wrap up or go low. Some guys I might try to hit up top because, you know, they do a good job of stepping through contract, contact. Like Saquon Barkley is a guy where the first game I learned the hard way, <laughs> trying to hit him low, he's jumping over you, he's bouncing yeah. off of stuff. And so he's a guy you gotta be able to wrap up, you know, up top, because I mean, even though he, that's, a, that's a tough, tall order, because he's strong, but he, he goes down easier when you can get him up top. So I, I had that plan every game. Can, can you break running backs down that you gotta tackle Malcolm into contact backs, and then backs that wanna make you miss? Yeah, oh yeah, you know, so you got, you know, I, I, th I say Ezekiel Elliott, Elliott, Ezekiel Elliott is probably the number one contact back in the league right now where yeah. he's looking to punish guys. He's not trying to juke you. He's not, he'll jump over you right now and then if you keep trying to go low, but he, he's fine with just punishing a defender at the end of it. Uh, you got guys like, you know, Saquon Barkley, who's kind of a hybrid. He can make you miss. Um, he's not really seeking contact though. He's, mm -hmm. a, he's a powerful runner, but he's not seeking contact. He's really trying to make you miss or outrun you. And so those two different running styles you know, require you to tackle a little bit different or approach the ball carrier a little different. Mm -hmm. Play action. Cousins back. Floats it to the near side. Making the catch is Rudolph. Malcolm Jenkins stopped him after only a two-yard pickup. On this play, you get so much depth here to get underneath here. 
So we're playing basically just like a invert half, basically. Darby's the deep defender, and then I'm technically the flat defender. I gotta hold off the seven, just like you would tell a, a, a squat corner, yep. and then make them check this down, and then you just gotta run and get him down, try to mitigate the amount of yards he gets. Rudolph coming across the formation, and it's played extremely well by Malcolm Jenkins. What's your indicator that it's not run right here? So in my mind, this formation is only, the only types of runs I'm gonna get with the tight end. He's off, but he's tight direct dive solid and so if it, and if it is dive solid that receiver is the one that's got to block me and so i'm just feeling him really i'm looking inside but i'm feeling him once he doesn't block me i'm, I'm out the way you really drive to get the depth you can always come up mm -hmm. but once you take that depth it takes that corner away a lot of guys playing that position they don't get that depth yeah I, yeah i mean that, that's the biggest thing you got to get it as fast as you can it's really about the angle like i know i don't have to get i don't have to touch this receiver to take away the throw. I just got to be able to get in the angle. You know, from, from a quarterback's perspective, I can guarantee you my pre-snap read and with you in that position, I come on this fake, I got this old cut out here, it's like stealing. I mean, that's my, my, my thinking on well, that. that play yeah, yeah. yeah, he's not buzzing that thing. Right. He's not taking that, that, that old cut away. I mean, to me, that's just an incredible move to get that depth. But here you are again. Yeah, I just got there fast enough on this one. <laughs> Out of here with that, man. It's a, it's the same same concept as is the play we watched before. Yep. With this motion, that takes my run responsibilities now outside of this guy, so I can loosen up and get a head start on my drop. I'm gonna get my depth first. I just know I'm deep enough to take away the seven if he ran it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm really just looking at the quarterback. So I'm 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 hoping I'm waiting for this check down because um, I want them to see that they just see an open check down. It's like they can't help it. They want to okay. throw it out there. My whole goal at this point is get there before <laughs> before he squares up and tries to make him miss. Another perfect tackle. Another open now. field form tackle. So now I'm playing dime linebacker. I got this B gap technically versus the run, but anytime that that tackle doesn't block the end, you know something's up. So I'm just tracking him, and I know all right if he's run out there, it's, it's a screen. I'm trying to really beat these other linemen before they can get to me. And as soon as I see the ball, I break. Malcolm Jenkins knew exactly what the play was, and he jumps the play almost immediately. So, so much, it sounds like, Malcolm, is just trusting your eyes. Yep. Like seeing it. Like, you, once you see it, as soon as they throw it, we're all breaking on the throw. 13 different starters in that defensive backfield mm -hmm. this season. I mean, to me, that puts an incredible amount of pressure on you to get those guys not only aligned right, but you have to handle them emotionally. How do you handle those guys game day? You know, hey, when it's live fire yeah. and guys are making mistakes well, and you got a guy that didn't know you till two weeks prior <laughs> to going on that field, yeah. you know? Well, I always, I always try to make it as hectic, hectic as possible during the week, so that you don't, I don't want to mess with anybody on, on game day. I'm not trying to yell at guys for messing up during the game. Like when Avante Maddox changed the, made the switch from corner to safety, yeah. uh, the very first walkthrough we had, I stepped out of it and said, "You, you go, you make all the calls." Like, because that's what he's gonna, we were gonna require you to do that, and it was uncomfortable for him at first, but like. In doing that, he was able to then get into a, a game where the game is easy. We want to cause as much havoc and like make all the mistakes you can during the week, so that when we get to the game, it's just it's just easy. Hey, over communicate now. Make sure we all on the same page. I always hear these coaches talk. You got to communicate. You got to talk. Mm -hmm. And some guys, if they don't really know it, they ain't <laughs> opening up their mouth. Right. Right. Yeah. But if you can get them, like you said, during the week to open it up, get mm -hmm. used to it, it's going to be easier game day. Yep. But like even this play right here. Like, there's a lot of communication going on right now. Yep. But amongst everybody. This is D.D. Westbrook. He's got some He's Fast. got some speed here. So the funny thing about this play is I'm actually supposed to be blitzing. Okay. Oh. I looked up and, and realized nobody was covering the third receiver. Yeah. If you see Razul Douglas right now, he's, he's running over. Yeah. Late. Right. And so I'm trying to get him to come. They snap the ball. So I'm not going to blitz. I'll just cover him. Every team's got this route concept in where it's just two ends and then a seven by number three. Bortles backs up, firing for the end zone, incomplete. Great coverage by Malcolm Jenkins. So does Rasul come back to you and say, man, thank, thank you, thanks oh, for coming? Of course. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Better. Yeah, of course. That's something that can happen. Yeah. 
Sometimes it's just it's just one of those things like you gotta have guys that can problem solve on the field. And I, I take pride in, in that being kind of my role on the on the team. Sometimes you're gonna get misaligned, sometimes you're not, you know, everything's not gonna go right. And <laughs> oftentimes there's a lot of guys in the league that if it's not the way we practiced it, the way we talked about it, like they'll short circuit. Right. And so, you know, for me, um, I pride myself in being able to to kind of figure that stuff out on the run. Did you, did you always have that sort of calmness to just, or is that something you grew into? I, I grew into it. I remember uh, in New Orleans, uh, Roman Harper was, <laughs> was a guy I looked up to a lot and we used to talk all the time. And I was a sticker for like rules. I'm like, the defense says we got to do this. That's, this is the gap I'm supposed yeah. to be in X, Y, and Z. And he said, look, you're a rule guy. He said, and I'm, I'm a guidelines type of guy. Like I got guidelines and I'm going to play it, you know, how I feel it. Whereas you're going to play it how it's written. And then eventually, and I didn't know what he mean, meant by that until like now I am in my 10th year and you just have a better feel for the game where I know where I'm supposed to be, but if something goes wrong, I can play off of it. I can, it's, it's like a, it's like a, a good dance. Like you, you just feel the game a little bit different. Ryan takes the snap. He looks right, looks left, fires right to Freeman, who is tackled by Malcolm Jenkins. Little breakdown in communication in that secondary. This one right here is, is uh, one of those classic over-communication type things. <laughs> <laughs> right now I'm like, okay, we're in a dime package. I got the back. Um, and so in my mind, I'm, I'm locked in. And then late, Corey Graham says something to me. He's saying switch, but he's saying it to the wrong person. And so when he said it, I thought that meant, okay, well, you got the back. And I realized nobody's out here covering the back. So now I just try to run over there and make the, <laughs> make the tackle. You're like the eraser, man. You're covering up for all these guys' mistakes. Yeah, yeah. and that's why I get to I'm like, Corey, don't talk to me. <laughs> Stop talking to me. Like, you're tripping me out. He's, he's telling me, I wasn't talking to you. I was telling somebody else. But it's like one of those things where, you know, yeah, you just got to feel, you know, you got to feel it. It's just one of those things like when, if you feel middle of the play, nobody's covering a guy, don't just not go over there because that's not your job. Yeah. This motion right here is just ID motion. They want to know if we're in man or man or not. And but with any motion comes communication. You know, everybody's got to know, you know, what we're on. So Sanu going to motion, Sydney's running with him. Mm -hmm. That's a pre-snap indicator uh, for man coverage. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what that's the what things. they use it for. Yeah, right. we're actually not in man, but yeah. to the quarterback, it looks like man. Right. That's that's what they do. You know, to figure out to give the quarterback a, a, a snapshot on what coverage is coming. The the chess match that goes on, Malcolm. It, it's it, it never really ends. No. Like, but communication is, is paramount to every single one of these plays. Yeah. I mean, every, yeah, the, the fastest way to lose a game is blow a coverage. Yep. And so for us, like, at the end of the day, we don't care what we're in. As long as, even if somebody makes the wrong call, we can live with a wrong call as long as we're all playing it the same. If, if, once you get, you know, one guy playing this, another guy playing that, that's where you get in trouble. Okay. Brady under center. On first down, he's back. He pumps. He's going deep for Cooks, who's open at the 40. Runs in a circle and it's flat on the 40-yard line of the Eagles. From the backside, Malcolm Jenkins comes, and he lays quite a lick on it. You can't see me. I said it going to the ball, though. It's with your shoulder. Right. It's oh, the yeah. shoulder. It's not, to, it's not defenseless or anything like that. No, not when he's running with the ball, yeah. I got this guy in the flat. I'm, I'm running. I'm like, okay, I'm running to the ball. And I'm like, once he starts doing this, I'm like, he has to know that I'm here. And he put this last cut right here. I'm like, oh, he doesn't see me at all. But the one thing you say after this, when everybody else is kind of celebrating this hit, Malcolm, mm -hmm. is I should have gone for the ball. You can't see me. I should have gone to the ball. Though. Right. And that's, and that's how I'm thinking about it because the, the hit obviously is great. You know, everybody wants to talk about it. But in my mind, I'm like, I got a ball carrier right now who doesn't see me coming mm -hmm. and, right. and therefore is not necessarily protecting the ball. So at this point, I can take a shot on the ball and it most likely will come out. Like if I just punched at the ball right there, it's probably coming out because he doesn't even feel me there. Mm -hmm. And so those are the type of things like when I sat with, with Brian Dawkins that he's talking about, like most people are going to be OK with, you know, just the tackle, the hit. It's like, but if you, you really want to have impact on games, you got to find those small opportunities. and. When a ball carrier doesn't see you, doesn't feel you, that's a, that's a good opportunity to get the ball out. Manning is back again. He's being chased. He floats it out. He's got Jennings. And Jennings fumbles the football. Look, Malcolm Jenkins wrestles the football out. 
Malcolm Second Jenkins turnover. once again on the spot getting the football out. I'm not going to overhype myself here. <laughs> oh, please do. <laughs> so, so I, I've it's got... It's your show, Malcolm. Right here. You're in the slot here, Malcolm. That's Deshaun Jackson. I've, I've got a man-to-man -man right now. We're, we're in man coverage. Yeah, I obviously know that he's a, a blazer. Yeah. And so what I'm doing is I'm, I told my safety, if Deshaun tried to go up and over, he'd snatch him from me and then I'd replace the post. So I, I know all I got to do is cover the outside routes. And so that's why I'm able to be just a little bit more patient. But I am cluing the, the quarterback as well. When I see him throw it out here, now I'm just, this is just trying to get effort to the ball, help out with a tackle. When you get here, like, you're the last line of defense right there. Mm -hmm. But are you looking to poke that out right now, or are you just looking yeah. to get Mike Evans down? Well, I, I, I saw on tape that, you know, he holds the ball a little loose sometimes, mm -hmm. especially when, when guys are trying to break tackles. Yeah. And so, like, right here as I approach, as soon as I saw the ball right there loose, I'm like, okay, I got I to gotta punch at it. And so, really, I'm just waiting for him. I'm waiting for the time. That's why I don't attack him right here. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for the right time to punch at it. Wow. And came out. That's a veteran move right there. Being patient like that, man. Yeah. It's not enough to just get this guy on the ground. Uh, but how can you just take an ordinary, you know, play and, and, and make something with it? And so I was looking for these small opportunities and one presented it. Wow. This is, yep, this is Tampa 2, and I'm technically the Mike linebacker the right Mike, here. Yeah. 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 So for just the people out there, Malcolm, like Tampa 2 is really a three deep coverage. Yeah, Tampa 2, you got two deep safeties. You got your Mike, who's technically a third. He's the middle of the field, you know, third defender. Mm -hmm. And then you got two underneath hook players and two corners. The Mike is is kind of the, the wild card in it. You know, most teams will try to sit something down in front of him so he can he can be aggressive on that. But if it, they go vertical, he's got to be able to play both both ways. He steps up, firing for the end zone. Intercepted! Intercepted! Jenkins intercepted. He's across the 20. We're backed up. I'm playing for them to go for the for the end zone mm -hmm. because they got to take that shot. It's the two by two formation, so I know okay if they run seams. I'm really it's just a break on the quarterback drill for me. I got to defend the seams up on either side. So when you're backpedaling here, Malcolm, you're just reading Eli's eyes. I'm just looking at Eli the whole time. Okay. And knowing that if he throws this in the middle of the field at all, that's where I'm going. And so I'm just tracking him. Were you surprised you threw it? No, no, I wasn't. I mean, because this little bit, I was. this little movement, <laughs> this little saying. movement right here, yeah. you know, where I'm, I'm coming back to this, this way, leads him to probably believe that, that, that he's getting that, that window open. He's probably looking to the right. That made you kind of s s yeah, shuffle a little bit. Yeah, something about his body. Yeah. Did, did you bait him a little bit on that play? Because it doesn't look like he tried to manipulate you. No, I mean, he didn't he, try to manipulate he, me. At you all. almost manipulated him. Right. That's what I said. That move, yeah, that movement yeah. right there gives him the, the idea that that's open. Backing up and being able to stay square just allowed me to go either way, which, you know, ended up in a big interception. Yeah. So here you are right here, free safety. Your general versatility here, Malcolm. This being a true zone, I'm, I'm really just all off the quarterback. Right, yeah. Right. Stay patient and go either left or right based off of where he's looking. This is a really good job defensively. They play a two deep zone this time. And Malcolm Jenkins, he hightails, gets to the football, and takes it back the other way. It's amazing what happens sometimes when you just go back to a simple approach. Yeah. And you just play really <laughs> yeah. simple football. Yeah. I mean, we can over, everybody can overcomplicate this thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. My, Greg Williams once told me, and that stuck with me, he said, the, the game of football is a simple game made complicated by dumb coaches. <laughs> <laughs> Greg said that? Greg said that. I said, uh, yeah, yeah. You might be right. Let's go to this next play here, Malcolm, because now we're Super Bowl oh, 52 yeah, here, here we Malcolm. Go. All right. We got you. We got you. If ever there were a time for this defense to rise to an occasion, and I mean that historically, it is tonight. Legends are going. Yep. One play at a time, bro. He's looking for a stop. This was the play. Yeah. When you needed him, he came through. Brandon Graham rips the football out of the hands of Tom Brady.
It was getting out of control how much success their offense was having, and it got to the point where defensively we're just like, look, if we get one stop, because our offense is rolling as well, mm -hmm. we get one stop, that's all we'll need. And so it was like, we don't know who's going to do it, <laughs> but all we need is one. And then obviously that, that one came, it was, that, that was the, the one we needed. One more. It wasn't over. One more. Hey, hey. Hey, we might need one more. We might need one more. Let's go. It came down to the final play. Mm -hmm. Came down to a Hail Mary. And first of all, if you just back this up, I mean, this is the biggest game, the biggest, the whole thing. Yep. You know what it's all about. So, but you practice this stuff all the time, but you can't really practice it. Right. And, and honestly, I probably was the only person on the field who did what we practiced. <laughs> so, no. so like, you know, we, 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 we go over these, these situational, you know, situations all the time in the game, this much time, you know, all right, Hail Mary, you know, how do you want to do it? We were actually in the, this defense that we were in, we were expecting them to take another shot to the sideline before, get to get closer before they threw it up. You know, that's why we we're all down here on the sideline over here, because we were expecting uh, them to throw something out of bounds. So halfway through the snap, all of a sudden it's apparent that they're going vertical, they're going for the end zone. So we got to scramble to match a guy. And, and we're supposed to box them out. <laughs> yeah. We got deep defenders. They're the designated jumpers. Everybody else has their guy. You're supposed to box them out from the ball. But what always ends up happening in these situations is everybody goes up for the ball. The problem with that is if it gets tipped, sure. like in, if you look at the end of it, yeah, they have guys that are designated the for, the, yeah, for the tip. So Gronk is obviously the primary jumper, but if you look at the rest of their receivers, they're all waiting for to the looking. Exactly. I'm the only one who boxed my guy out. <laughs> 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 like, you know, I immediately, like, you know, put, put a body on him, and I'm like, I'm not looking for the ball at all. I'm just, I'm trying to make sure he's not getting the ball. There was you a know collective it. holding of the breath for about oh, three man. seconds. There, everybody. Yeah. And it is battle to roll, and it's and complete. complete. And the game is over. Oh! The game is over. Well, that exercised a lot of demons and made a, all us former Eagles very happy. Congratulations. Thank that you. Was a, that now, the were the first, you were on a team that got the Saints their one Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yep. The Eagles, their one Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, that's unique right there. It is. I've been, I've been fortunate. You know, I can't, I'm obviously not going to take credit for any of that, but I've been in the right place at the right time. Well, I mean, you'll always be remembered in yeah, both New Orleans yeah. and Philadelphia. I mean, yeah, at least, no, you know what he'll be remembered be for? <laughs> yes. The course safe slot linebacker, which will be, <laughs> and people will go, huh? And I'll go, Malcolm Jenkins. Oh, yeah, oh, we yeah, got yeah. him. Corner safety, <laughs> linebacker, slot defender, the course safe slot backer. Malcolm, I feel like we all got a lot smarter today. Listen, yeah, and just watching you kind of break this stuff Absolutely. down. Um, we really appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Welcome to the film session, buddy. Thank you. Thank you.